All right then, gang. So if you remember to previous lessons when we were talking about classes and inheritance, we could easily create a new class called admin, which inherited from the user class, right? So I want to do something similar in this video, but this time we're not using classes. So what do we want to do exactly again? Well, we want to create an admin class, right? We have this user class right here, and we have these methods on the prototype of that user class. Now we want to create an admin class. Now, remember that admin class is still a user. It's still going to have these properties, email, name, and online, and it's still going to be able to use these functions, log in and log out, or at least we want it to have those properties and we want it to be able to use these functions. So first of all, we need to make a constructor for this admin class, right? So let's do that. First of all, I'm going to create a new function, call this admin with a capital A, because this is a constructor. Now inside this, and I'm not going to pass any parameters in here just yet inside here. This is where we're going to make up our admin, right? And if I wanted to make a new admin, I could say something like this var and then admin, but you can call this what you want this, uh, this variable. And I'll set that equal to a new admin, which is going to call this constructor function. Remember passing an empty object and bind the context of this to that empty object inside this constructor. So we're calling a new admin right here. We also want to pass in some parameters because at the end of the day, this is still a user. We still want it to have an email and a name, right? So let's pass in those parameters first of all. So I'll call this admin Sean at ninjas.com. And then the second parameter will be the name. So Sean. All right then. So we're making this new admin now and we're passing in these variables. So what we could do is we could take in these parameters right here and we could set this dot email, this dot name, this dot online again. But instead, what I want to do is just inherit from this user class right here. Right. So what I could do instead is call this user function and pass in the properties that I have right here that have been given. So what we could do is use a rest parameter right here, which is three dots. And then I'll just call this args. And what that does is take in these parameters right here as um, an array. So it's going to place each of these right here and put them into an array, if you like. So now if I say here args without the um, three dots in front of them, that is going to be an array of these things right here. So let me just log that to the console so you can see console.log args. Right. By the way, if you want to read more about the rest parameter, what I'll do is leave a link down below uh, to the documentation on the Mozilla guide. It really goes into detail about what this does. But essentially, I'm capturing these things right here and placing them into an array, which I can then access right here. And I'll tell you the reason I need that in array in a second. So let me save this and let's view this in a browser. So now if I say down here, new user, let's just refresh this. We can see this thing right here. All right. So we have this array now of parameters. We've taken those in. So then what I want to do now, I've got those parameters, the email and the name right here. What I want to do is call this function right here because that is going to take that email and it's going to take that name and it's going to apply it to my new instance, my new object, right? This thing that I've just created. So how can I then call this thing right here from here? Well, what I could do is just get the function name, which is user, then use a method called dot apply. We could also use dot call, which is similar. I'm going to use dot apply. So that is going to take this function right here and it's going to run that function. And in here, what we need to do is pass in two parameters. First of all, we want to pass in the context of this in here. So what is the this keyword going to be equal to inside this function? Now, if I pass some kind of random variable inside here, then that will be this inside the user. What I want to do is pass in the new object that we just created. Now, remember that new object inside a constructor function is this, right? So all I need to do is pass in the value of this to this apply thing right here. So then when we go to this user function and when it's actually run, this thing right here that we're passing in, that is the keyword right here. That's what this refers to. So the new object we've just created. Now, I understand this might be like walking into the twilight zone right now and it might not make much sense. But honestly, all we're doing 
is creating a new object, right? Binding the context of the this keyword to that new object and passing it into this function right here. Then when we say user.apply, we're passing that context, this, into this function. So that when we say this inside here, we're referring to the new object that we just created that's been passed inside here. I really hope that makes sense. So anyway, we're passing that in. Now the second argument is gonna be the actual arguments we received here in array format. So what we wanna do essentially is pass in, you know, arg1 and um, arg2, and that is gonna be the email and the name. So, you know, email and name. Now that's the reason I use this thing right here. Okay, so that I could capture these arguments as an array because this second argument right here, this is an array of arguments we want to pass into the function that we're applying this to right here. Okay, so what I can do now is just say, well, we're passing the args in because that is the array we've captured right here. Okay, so these three dots are turning these things into an array, right? So that we can grab that as an array. I hope that makes sense. So now we're calling this user function, passing in the context of this, and passing in these variables right here, these two things, so that now it's gonna create this new user for us and attach these different values to it. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So now what we could do is down here, instead of logging, instead we'll get rid of all that, we'll say console.log admin instead to see what this does, right? And we should basically just have a user because it's doing at the minute pretty much the same thing. We're just passing our stuff into here, and then that is saying, okay, we want to inherit essentially from the user, so I just wanna call the user function and pass in the arguments that you gave me, right? So let's save that, and let's go over here, and now we can see this admin type, this admin object logged to the console, and it is essentially just a user. We have the same different properties, right? Only this time we're not making that admin from scratch, we're inheriting from this user right here, right? Because we don't want to have to make this from scratch. Right now there's only three properties on here, but there might be 15 in the future. I don't want to rewrite all of that out inside the admin. Plus, by doing this, what we can do is say, okay, well, we want all of this stuff right here, but we can also, if we wanted to, add on a new property that only admins have, um, additionally to the stuff we've got from the user. So I could say this dot, I don't know, uh, role and set that equal to super admin or something like that. Now, this role property is something that only an admin would have and not a user. So I don't want users to have this, but hey, I want this admin to have an additional role property, right? So now it's getting that as well as the stuff we've inherited from this normal user. So if I save this now, let me just log over here and we can see that we have the role property as well but when we create a user user one we don't have that role property right so we've inherited all of this stuff from the user but we've added this on to the admin as well something extra okay cool now at the minute if we look inside the proto of the user we have these two functions now Right here, we don't have those two functions and we need a way to inherit those functions as well. So how do we do that exactly? Well, it's all to do with this prototype property right here. Now, user, this class has its own prototype property, which we're attaching these methods to. Now, admin is also gonna have its own prototype property. So we could say something like admin.prototype and then attach methods to this admin as well. Now, again, I don't wanna write this out from scratch, so I don't want to rewrite login and do a function, you know, for login, etc. I want to inherit from this prototype right here. So how exactly do I do that? Well, all we do is we say admin.prototype is equal to, and then we're gonna say object.create. This is a way to create an object in JavaScript, and we're gonna base it on the prototype of this user, because at the end of the day, the prototype property right here, that is just an object. So what we want to do is create a new object for the admin prototype, which is based on the prototype for the user, because we want to inherit all of that functionality, right? So the thing that we want to inherit from, we just pass inside here. That is user.prototype, like so. Now then, 
If we save this and check this out in the browser, just watch this. If we open up the admin now, we can see that the proto is pointing to the user prototype because now we've just inherited that right here. We've said that we want to base the admin prototype on the user prototype, okay? So now we have access to these different functions right here, all right? So if I say now admin or rather admin dot login, like so, that's gonna work. Sean at ninjas.com has logged in because the prototype of the admin class right here is pointing to the user's prototype. Now notice we have the proto nested inside the proto. That's because we've not directly added these methods onto the admin prototype. Again, this might seem a bit weird, but bear with me. Imagine now I wanted to add an extra method onto admins, but not onto users. Well, all I could do is take that admin prototype, so I'll say admin.prototype, then I'm gonna add on a new function, and I'm gonna call this delete user, right? And I'll set this equal to a function. Now then, we've already inherited the user prototype right here and set it equal to the admin prototype. So that's set up, we've inherited all of that behavior, right? But now what we're doing is adding additional functionality to just the admin prototype right here, all right? So a normal user isn't gonna have this method, but an admin will. Now, if I save this, let's check this out in the browser again. So if I open this and I look at the proto, we're still pointing to the user. That's where we're inheriting from originally, right? But we also have this delete user method, right? Now, in the users proto object, now we have the login and log out. Remember, if we say user one like this and open this up, this right here, this points to object, which is what the user type is inheriting from automatically. Now inside here, we have the login and log out. So we have kind of this chain of proto properties right here. And this is called a prototype chain. If we were to have something else inherit from admin, then we'd have three of those. We could have something like super admin or something like that that inherits from admin. And then when we open that up in the console, we'd see three of these proto things right here. The first one would be admin, then user, and then we'd have the last prototype. So I hope that makes sense. We're inheriting some stuff from the user prototype. And then what we're doing is adding additional stuff to the admin prototype, delete user. All right, so we have access to all of these different methods right here. All right then, so let's fill out this delete user method. So first of all, what I'd like to do is create an array of users. So I'll say var users, and I'll set that equal to the different things that we have here. So user one, and then user two, and then finally admin. So that's those three users. So we have those stored in an array. Now this method here is gonna try to delete one of those users it's gonna take in a parameter when we call this function, that parameter is gonna be referred to as you inside this function, we'll pass that in when we call it, okay? So now what we're gonna do is say, okay, we want to update the users array right here because we want to filter a user out of it, we want to delete something. So we'll say users and set that equal to users.filter, we talked about this in a previous video, it's gonna filter through that array and take something out of it dependent on the return value. So we'll take that individual user as we cycle through them into this ES6 arrow function. We don't need a space right there. And then inside here, we want to return either true or false. So we'll return user.email is gonna be not equal to you.email. So if the emails match, then we're gonna return false. But if the emails don't match, we'll return true. If we return false, then we're gonna filter that user out of the array. So now let's give this a whirl. I'm gonna save this like so and go to the console. First of all, I'll log out users just to see those three things are in there. Now, if I say admin dot delete user, oops, let's try that again, admin dot delete user, and then pass in the user that we want to delete. We'll say users and one. So this one in the middle right here and Let's see if this works. Okay, so now we call users again, and we can see that no longer we have three, but we have two. 
Awesome, so that is working. Now, I said that this could only be used when an admin uses it. So if I try to say user one dot delete user, then this is not gonna work. So I'll pass in users zero to do that. And it says one uh, user one dot delete user is not a function. So that's because we've applied this just to the admin prototype, not to the user prototype. We've inherited the user prototype and then we've added something extra to the admin prototype. I hope that makes sense. So there we go, guys. That is prototypes in a nutshell. All of this kind of stuff is going on in the background when we use classes. And I just thought it would be good for you to understand all of this. If you want to use classes, that's fine. But it's nice to understand what's going on under the hood in case you ever run into any kind of problems or other people's code where they use prototypes instead. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this series. I hope you've learned something along the way. If you have enjoyed these videos, please, my friends, do not forget to share, subscribe and like. And if a lot of you want me to, then what I'll do is maybe extend this series in the future just to go into a little bit more depth and look at maybe some practical examples. So feel free to leave that feedback down below.